Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here with lesson number 12 in our incredible new tutorial series where you are learning artificial intelligence on the Jetson Xavier NX. I am going to need you to pour yourself a nice enormous mug of iced coffee. That would be strong black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. I'm also going to need you to get out your Jetson Xavier NX gear. And as you are getting your gear out, as always, I would like to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your encouragement and your support that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and let's talk about what we are going to learn today. What we're going to look at is my solution to the homework assignment which I gave you in lesson number 11. Now where we ended up in lesson number 11, we have two Raspberry Pi cameras. Each is mounted on a servo controlled pan tilt platform and we were able to independently track two objects. So let's say the camera on the left could track a blue pin, the camera on the right could track a pink pin. As we move them around both cameras move to keep their particular object of interest in the center of the frame. So what I will need you to do now is, or I'm sorry, what we're going to do for today is, is the solution for the homework for that lesson, which was where that lesson le left off, if, uh, if one of these pins was not in the field of view, like if it moved, the moved out of the field of view of the camera, the camera would just stop and then wait for something to come into view that it recognized and then start tracking again. But hey, if we've got pan tilt servos, if you're not finding what you want in your field of view, what should you do? You should scan, okay? And so if you see it, track it, but if you don't see it, scan for it, all right? Now, I will admit, this was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be because kind of conceptually it was really easy. You could either be in track mode, and then if for some reason you don't have the object of interest in your field of view, then you go into scan mode. And I just imagine scanning 180 in pan, and then incrementing tilt, and then scanning 180 in pan, and incrementing tilt, and just sit there and kind of do that search pattern until an object was found, and then once it was found, lock onto it. But what I found was, was that there's just a it was pretty easy to get it to almost work, but where it would crash under special cases, like if you pulled the uh, if you pulled the servos over to the extreme extent of their ability to move, and then you hid the item, and then as it started trying to go into the scan mode, it would oftentimes crash. And so there's just a lot more special cases when we have two different modes on two different systems that we have to keep track of all the kind of like what I would say states of the system and transitioning from scan to search and from search to scan a lot of different ways you can have errors in there but I think I have it figured out and so let's jump right in go to the most excellent visual studio code and fire that up and as you're doing that, I am going to get out of your way so that you don't get angry with me. And then what we are going to do is we're going to start where we left off in lesson number 11. You might have already saved that program. If you haven't, let's go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com. And what I will need you to do is click on the happy little green search icon and search on Jetson Xavier NX lesson number 11. Come down here, click on the two little page icon, right mouse click copy, and then let's go back to Visual Studio, and we will need to come to the Explorer view. We are working in the OpenCV window, and we are going to add a file with a happy little plus. And then I think I'm going to call this, it looks like we are on Open, open CV. And this looks like it is going to be program number eight. 
and then I'm just going to call this search uh, search scan dot pi and the dot pi is kind of important all right we have a fresh new Python window I will close the Explorer and I should be able to paste that code all right there it is now let's just run it to make sure that we didn't mess anything up between last week and this week and I have the right stuff on the uh, on the website so I'm going to right mouse click run Python file and terminal and this should track the track the items if uh, if we haven't messed something up okay looks like it's come into life all right and so I got to give it something to look for and it looks like the left camera is tracking and the right camera is tracking I need to adjust that uh, no, I, I don't because it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter because we are not doing anything right here. But you see that one's tracking and then this one's tracking. And so things really look pretty darn good. All right, so I'm going to quit out of this. And so now what we need to do is we need to figure out how when the item of interest, the object of interest, leads, leaves the field of view how we scan it and find it. So I'm going to come up to the top of the program and we're going to need to add some variables. Okay, we are going to need to add some variables. And I guess the thing that I would introduce you to this is to say that we're going to have two different. Uh, we're going to have two different modes that we can work in, okay? And I am just doing a little bit of Windows management here. A little bit of Windows management. All right. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to think in this program. Before, we were just always scanning. And if we weren't scanning, we were stopping and just waiting for something. Just sit there and wait till something comes along to uh, to let us uh, let us scan on. I'll, uh, what I want to do now is if you if it doesn't see the pin, if the pin's not in field of view, I want to go look for it. All right. And so kind of conceptually, you've got to see there's two different modes that this program can be in. It can be in scan mode where it is tracking an object that it sees. But then if it is not seeing something, then rather than just sitting still, it goes into search mode. OK, it goes into skirt, uh, uh, search mode. Eh, let, me, uh, let me call that different. Either it's in track mode, where it's tracking an object it sees, or it's in scan mode, where it's trying to scan the full range of the servo motion until it finds something to track on. So we can be in scan mode and we can be in track mode. <coughs> now we have two cameras and what you got to see is one camera might be in scan mode and the other camera might be in track mode or they might be in both in track mode or they mo might both be in scan mode. But again the thing you have to see is scan mode is where you see an object and you are uh, I mean track mode is where you see the object and you track it. If you don't see it, then you go into scan mode where you look for it. So what I am going to do is I'm going to define two new variables, and we'll use it, be using these variables throughout the program. And the first variable I'm just going to call scan, and this is scan for the right camera. So scan right would sort of be the state of the right camera. Scan right and we will just set it equal to true. And what that means is, is that just when we fire up the program, we are going to be in scan mode. And we will leave scan mode when we see an object, an object of interest. But we're going to start out in scan mode on the right camera. And similarly, we're going to have scan left. And scan left is going to be true. And that is for the left camera, T-R-U-E, scan left is true. So initially when we start the program it's going to assume nothing's there and it's going to start scanning. Now in the first frame it's going to go grab a frame and if there's something there it will switch from scan mode to track mode. Okay from scan mode to track mode. But if I don't I don't need a separate set of variables for track left and track right because it's kind of like if scan 
is true, then you're scanning. If scan is false, then you're tracking. So you don't need, you only need one sort of what I would call a state variable there, if that makes sense. Okay, so now we need to think about what we are going to do next. And one of the things we need to probably take care of just right off the bat is that let's come down here and let's come into our first uh, kind of like contour for loop. So here we're reading the frames from the two cameras. Here we are converting those frames to the hue, saturation, and value uh, <coughs> parameter space. Then we're reading our track bars and sort of creating that range of colors that we are going to track on. And then we come down here and now we're actually finding the contour. All right. Now this will return an array of contours, so we're going to step through that array of contours. And then we're only really going to be tracking if, number one, we find something, okay, in that, that contour finds something. And then number two, the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to say we're only going to count it if it's more than 100 pixels. That would be if it's smaller than 10 pixels by 10 pixels, we're going to ignore it. So this is where the real action occurs. We say if, we say if the area is greater than or equal to 100, that is where we would actually go in and we would start scan, we would start uh, tracking. All right. So if we're going to track here, then I just need to say that scan left, because remember contour one, this frame one, this first set of parameters is our left camera. So I'm going to say scan left is equal to false. Why is it false? Because we found an object. It's bigger than 100 pixels, and so we don't want to be scanning. We want to be tracking, all right? And in order to keep track of the fact that I'm tracking, I need to make scan left equal false. And similarly, uh, when I come down here to the second camera, which is frame two, which gets the set of contours, contours two, and then I step through contours two, and then if I find something that is greater than 100 and 100 pixels, then I need to say scan right is equal to false. Why? Because I found something big enough to track on. All right, so this is just going to kind of help me keep track of what state I'm in. If I enter into this area greater than 100, then that camera goes to track mode. All right, so I turn off scan mode. Okay, so then I come down here and everything else is going to be left the same because if I am tracking, I just need to use the track routine. If I am tracking the other camera, I need to use the other camera tracking routine, which already works. And let's try to, if it's not broken, let's try, let's don't try to fix it. All right, so I think that hopefully that makes sense to you. And if it doesn't, it should here shortly. All right. Now, this is where we have to create what I'm going to call the scan mode. All right. Well, we go into scan mode if, let's start with scan left. If scan left is true, then we jump in and we start doing the scanning algorithm. We don't have to worry about the tracking because if there's not an object, it won't end up down in that if statement. Okay, it won't end up in that if statement, so we don't have to check on it because if it doesn't find an object, it won't end up down there. But here we have to actually check. So I'm going to say if scan left equal equal true. Well, how would scan left equal equal true? Well, that means you looked at the frame, you didn't find an object, so you didn't turn scan left to false, which means scan left is true, and now you're ready to start, uh, you're ready to start scanning. Okay, now what do we want to do? Well, the first thing that we got to do is we've got to make sure that, right, we're just going to start scanning, but we've got to be careful that we're not all the way over, like imagine that I pulled that servo all the way over to 180 degrees in track mode, 
I've got to make sure that I don't add one degree to 180 and write it to the servo and then have the system crash. So the trick is in switching from track mode to scan mode that you don't run outside the allowable range on those uh, on those servos. So I've got to look, I've got to say if pan 1 is greater than or equal to 179, that means that you're already panned all the way over. If that is true, we want to go back the other way. All right, we want to go back the other way. So we would say then D pan 1, that's the the delta D pan 1 is going to be equal to the absolute value of D pan 1. Okay, the absolute value of D pan 1 times minus 1. Now, you might go back and remember what was it in about lesson number 10 when we were just scanning. We didn't do this. We just said if pan 1 is greater than or equal to 179 or less than or equal to 1, then just d pan is, uh, or this shouldn't be, yeah, uh, d pan is d pan times negative 1. Well, we got to be more careful here, all right, because always before, if I was at 179, I got there because d pan was positive, and then I would just multiply by negative 1, and it would make it go the other way, and multiply by negative 1, and make it go the other way. But what you got to see now is, I might not have gotten to 179 on scanning, I might have gotten to 179 on tracking, and my d pan might actually be uh, negative, but I got over there by tracking, and now when it goes away and I switch the sign of D-pan, then it goes out of range. Pause the video and make sure you understand that, because if you don't, your program is going to crash. So that means I have to explicitly say that if I'm at 179, I'm going to make D-pan negative. All right, and I do that by taking the absolute value of D-pan, which makes it positive and then multiply by negative one. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, stop and think about it because it is important. Now I have to explicitly do the other case, okay, and the other case is if pan, and that's just one F, if uh, pan one, there used to be an IFF, right, like if and only if, I can't remember exactly what programming language used that. But if pan 1 is less than or equal to 1, what do I want to do? Well, I want to say, uh, I want to make d pan 1 equal to the absolute value of d pan 1. So if I'm at 0, or 1, I want to make d pan that change in pan positive. And so I take the absolute value of d pan. And this, this is just acknowledging that when I get to 180, I really don't know whether my d pan is positive or negative. Or when I get to 0, I really don't know whether my d pan are positive or negative. All right, if I'm going to use these two things, I better be good and I better set these variables up here at the very top. And so here where we're doing tilt 1, pan 1, tilt 2, pan 2, I better say D tilt or D, D pan 1 is equal to 1 and D pan 2 is equal to 1 and then D tilt 1 is equal to. Now here I want to I pan 1 degree at a time when I'm searching. But when I step up, I don't want to go one degree because that would take forever to scan the field of view. So in the vertical direction, the tilt, I want to go 10 degrees at a time. So I'm going to say D tilt 1 is equal to 10. And then D tilt 2 is equal to 10, if that makes sense. I really hope it does. Okay. So now we come back down here to where we were working on, okay, if scan left... Okay, if we want the left camera to be in scan mode, 
then pan 1 is greater than 179 uh, make it negative if pan 1 is less than or equal to 1 make it positive all right now once we do that now what we can do is say the new pan 1 is equal to the old pan the old pan 1 plus d pan 1 and if I'm thinking about this right, then absolutely what this should do is this should force it where it will not ever have an out of range value. OK, so now what I will do is now I need to after I'm done with all that, I need to actually write those servo values. But that needs to be inside that needs to be inside this if statement. OK. It needs to be inside this if statement. So if scan left is true, now I'm going to actually apply that uh, new pan value to the servo. So I'm going to say kit.servo2 dot angle equal pan one. So now the pan value is created based on scanning okay based on the scanning algorithm and then just for good measure we haven't really dealt with tilt yet but I'm just going to good for good measure say kit kit uh, dot servo three dot angle is equal to tilt one all right so this should if I am thinking right this should go ahead and scan back and forth looking for the pin it should scan back and forth looking for the pin but it won't be looking up and it won't be looking down so i could still hide the pin by being too low out of the field of view but this is logically complicated enough let's just make sure that we can do the scan the pan all right so let's look at this and i am going to say run python file and terminal And we have an error already, it looks like. What happened here? Line 140. What on earth did it not like about line 140? Ah. This was not a clause. It doesn't need a colon. That was a very, very bad mistake. And that was contours 2. And I did it correctly in Contours 1. The one other thing I think I need to do that I didn't do is uh, what I need to do here is after this, there's one other thing that I need to do. And this is not in the... Uh, this is not in the uh, if statement. I need to now set scan left equal to true and that just means I want you to keep scanning now don't worry when it goes back up and it goes down if there is something in the contour then it'll set it to false okay but just in case I am false right now and the next time through it doesn't go in there I need it to be true okay so that's just saying right now I could get to this point in the program by going through the contours if the con if inside the contours it sets the scan value to false I need to set it to true here but when I go through the next time and I get into that contours if there is something there it will set it to false so you've got to really think about what state you're in and I'm going to end the loop by putting the scan to true and that way if it doesn't find a contour it will know to come in and go into scan mode all right so I'm going to set scan equal to true. So let's run this thing. I think this is going to work. I really think this is going to work. Takes a second to lo load that servo library. I don't know why. Okay, so it looks like over here on the left camera, it did find the blue pin and it is tracking the blue pin. If I come over here, it has found it has found the pink pin. I'm going to dial that pink pin in a little bit better. 
okay and give it a little bit more to see here there you go okay so it's tracking both pins all right now I'm going to come over here and then I'm going to move it and you see it lost it but what's it doing now it's scanning for it it's looking for it and boom it found it okay now watch I'm gonna have it get lost but seek and destroy uh, let's see it found a little it found its neighbor's servo and kind of likes her and always stares at her okay so there we go we can come down and then I come over here it lost it but it comes back and finds it alright so that is pretty neat but now look at this you see and you guys up above me watch this you see I'm gonna come in low so you see when I came in low I'm sneaking under the radar screen and the way it's configured now the camera is just going to scan back and forth looking for it but it's only changing pan when it's in this scan mode <coughs> when it's in the scan mode it doesn't look up and down so we need to fix that so I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to quit but what you have to see is I don't want to I don't want to pan tilt pan tilt pan tilt because if I do that, it's going to look diagonally. What I want to do is pan through the full range of motion and then tilt. And then pan through the full range of motion and then tilt. You see, like that. So you got to kind of think about how you are going to do your if statements. And what that means is I am not going to, uh, I am not going to tilt in all of those cases, okay? I'm going to come here and now that I've got my pan my if statements right on my pan now I've got to figure out should I tilt or not well when would I want to tilt if pan 1 is greater than or equal to 179 all right or if pan 1 is less than or equal to 1 then what do I want to do well what I've got to do here is I have got to make sure well let's see what I would what I would do then is I would come here and what I would do is I would say tilt 1 is equal to tilt 1 plus D tilt right D tilt is the change in tilt D tilt 1 alright so that's what I want to do if I've gone all the way to the right, panned all the way to the right, I want to increment tilt. Or if I panned all the way to the left, I want to increment tilt. Does that make, sh make sense? Okay, that's good. But if we leave it like this, it's going to go like this, and it's going to go like this, and then when the tilt gets all the way up, it's going to crash. So I've got to make sure that I'm not out of range on my tilt. So inside the if pan is greater than 179 or pan, ooh, uh, pan, yeah, pan 1 is less than or equal to 1. Inside there, I've got to now check if my tilt is, is at its limits of uh, range. And so I'm going to say if uh, tilt 1 is greater than or equal to 170. Now, why do I say 170? Because I'm incrementing the tilt 10 degrees at a time. So if I'm at 175, and then next time I add 10 to it, I'm at 185 and I'm out of range. And so I've got to stop it at 170 because 170 plus 10 is 180. That will make sure that I stay in range. Really, if we were better programmers, we would say that it was uh, if tilt is less than 180 minus whatever my original D tilt was. But we'll just kind of hack it together here today. So now what do we do if, if tilt is greater than or equal to 170 we want to take d tilt 1 okay d tilt 1 and make it equal to the absolute value of d tilt 1 times minus 1 so that is exactly the same thinking that we used up here but it's just the difference is the difference is that we only do this when pan has reached the ex, uh, the extent of its travel so it's in, it's indented over it's inside that if statement and then similarly what we have to say is we have to say if tilt 
1 is less than or equal to not 1, but 10. OK, because we're jumping in units of 10. So when we get to 10, we've got to deal with this, or we're going to get out of range. What would we do in that case if tilt is less than or equal to 10? Then we need to say d tilt 1 is equal to the absolute value of d tilt 1. And so that's saying if we're all the way down, we want to make the increment positive, And we do that by taking the absolute value of it. If it's already positive, it's going to stay positive. If it's negative, it's going to become negative. OK, and then after we check for those out of range conditions, then what we can do is we can say that tilt 1 is equal to tilt 1 plus d tilt 1. And then we come back here, and then the pan 1 is pan 1 plus d pan 1. And then we apply those two signals to the servo. What is the chance this is going to work? Now remember, right now we're only working on the left camera, because if we get the left camera working, we can copy and paste it for the right camera and just change the indexes, like it would be camera 2, frame 2, hue 2, all those types of things. So let's go ahead and run this. And let's see what happens. And again, we'll be watching that camera on the left. I'm having fun with this. I think this is pretty neat. I've got all, all types of ideas of what we can do here with this. OK, let's see. All right. So I'll just help the one on the right. I'm helping the one on the right because we haven't implemented this code on the one on the right yet. And I would sure like that to find the cap. There it goes. All right. Now, that one is still tracking, so it's working, right? It's working. There it goes. And now this one over here, I'm going to help it out a little bit on my values, help it see it a little better. All right. So now, what you can see is we are tracking the blue. We are tracking the blue. But now I'm going to come over here. Now notice that if I am, uh, OK, if I am over here and getting out of the field of view, it starts looking for it, all right? And then if you watch the camera very carefully, when it gets over to its extent, the full extent of its uh, pan, it increments up in tilt. OK, but now it actually kind of almost found it. Let's make it a little easier here and see if it can find it. So it's searching for it, and boom, as soon as it came in the field of view, it locked on it. Be kind of neat if we put a little thing like locked, like a, you know, that we had a lock. If we put that as a label, I think that would be pretty good. OK, so let's get it all the way up there like that. And now you can see that it is flying under the radar screen. But now watch as the, uh, as the left camera is scanning. What it is doing is it is at the far extent of its pan, it decrements tilt. So you see how it's scanning the full room looking for that blue pin. I hope you can see that in the little camera up here, the little camera view down here. It is making its way. You know, you might even think about doing more than 10 degrees. Uh, the pan goes pretty fast, but the tilt seems to be going kind of slow. Maybe it's just because we're live here. But I just want to let it go and see if it can find the pin. Ah, boom. Locked on to it. All right. Come up here. And again, I kind of got it hidden. And so now... What we're seeing is it. there's no way for it to know whether to look up or down. So it just methodically keeps going. It's going to keep going down until it can't go down any further. And then it's going to start coming back up. Now, this went easy once I knew how to do it. 
But when I did it the first time, I was trying to use that trick of if something is less than one or greater than 179, combining my if statements. But that doesn't work for this because you could get all the way to the right by pulling it with a blue pen and then your D, uh, your D pan isn't what you thought it was going to be. So I had to break it out into these separate, I had to break it out completely into these separate uh, if statements to get it to work. Okay, so it went all the way down and didn't find it. And so now it is starting to scan and come back up and looking for it. This to me really is getting into the intelligence because it says, okay, I know I want to track the pin. I lost it. I have to go find it. And I just find it by just randomly looking left and right until it comes back into the field of view. It should see it pretty quick, I think. Yeah, you can see my hand play another couple of times and it'll find it. Uh, but what you really want to pay attention when you're debugging this, you really want to pay attention to what it's doing out at this sort of at those edge points and make sure that your program doesn't crash when you're going out to the out to the edges. <clears throat> I sure like these little servos. I think they're working really well. Do you think next time it'll see it? Yeah. The good news is it's going to be really easy to get the other camera working because we can just copy and paste what we've done and just change those uh, those uh, variable indexes. Oh, boom. Got it. Okay, now it is in track mode. Okay, now it is in track mode. Look at that. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to get the other camera working. So we're going to quit out of that and we're going to come over here and we're going to start with the if scan left equals true. And we're going to come all the way down to scan left equals true. And then we are going to copy it and then we are going to paste it. And this time, though, we're looking for if scan left, if scan right is equal to two, true. All right. And now we are on everything two, pan two, D pan two, D pan two, pan two, D pan two, D pan two, pan two. Pan two, tilt two, tilt two, D tilt two, tilt two. We're almost done here. D tilt two, D tilt two, D tilt, tilt, tilt two. We are so close. Pan 2 is pan 2 plus D pan 2. All right. And then here we're going to put on those servos pan 2 and tilt 2. And then these were servos 0 and servo 1. And now we got to tell it that scan right equal true. Man, this scan left scan right is true or false, that's kind of recording the, the state of what you're in. And you've really got to understand it. And it's one of the hardest things, I think, when you're just starting to code. Like, why do I set this scan right equal true here? Because the next time through, I want to make sure that I scan if it did not find a contour. So I'm going to set it to true. But if we come up here and it finds a contour, then it will set it to false. If it finds a contour, it will set it to false. And then because it, because it set it to false, then when it gets here, it won't do it. Okay, so think through that. Think why we have to set scan to true at the end of the loop and why we have to set it to false inside the loop. That way we are always either scanning or we are tracking. 
and tracking is not scanning. So that means we're either scanning or we're not scanning. And if we're not scanning, then we are tracking. Okay, let's go ahead now. And uh, I believe I fixed all that, right? I hope I did. You probably saw the ones I missed and are yelling at me, but let's give this a try now and see what happens. I'll be really looking at that uh, camera on the right because I know the camera on the left works. Okay, so it came up and it started looking for the pink pen and then it found the pink pen and I'm going to help it see the pink pen a little better. Kind of tune that pink pen in and I think I'm going to go ahead and tune that blue pen in a little bit. Okay, so now this works. All right, the blue one works. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the pink pen. Ah, it's kind of hard to hide it from it. Okay, now it has lost the pink pen. And what it looks like it's doing is it looks like that it's going to start by scanning up. And so it's got, going to have to scan all the way up and then it's going to come back down. But that's, uh, that's okay. And so I really think that this is a, I think this is a very, interesting and useful program and I think it's way way more useful than just tracking things that are within the field of view because imagine if you had a room full of people and you were looking for one person well you could look at the camera view and you don't see him and he could be over in the corner of the room with this feature if you don't see him you're gonna scan the crowd until you find him all right so Actually, that sounds kind of sinister, doesn't it? Some of this, some of this artificial intelligence stuff does indeed kind of have, kind of remind you of some sinister type things. But like, say for example, what I would like to do is uh, we have chickens at home, and those chickens, of all the wonderful places they could sit, they like to sit on the front porch, and they are not front porch trained. So when they're sitting on the front porch, they poop on the front porch, and then, you know, we got to go out every day and wash the front porch off. Okay, that, oh, I think it saw something pink over on the screen, and that's why it did that. Okay, boom. Did you see that? It found it. And now it is in track mode, and then I hide it. And when I hide it, then it goes back to scan mode until it finds it. Okay, I'll hide it behind them. There. It's pretty good at finding it. It really is pretty good at finding it. So anyway, about the chickens, what I'd like to do, make an artificial intelligence system that would scan the front porch for chickens. And then if there was chickens on the front porch, then we take countermeasures. What those countermeasures are, that's yet to be determined. But there will be countermeasures. And the chickens won't bother the front porch anymore. Now, since I enjoy the eggs from the chickens, I need non-lethal countermeasures. I also need something that wouldn't injure the chicken because of, uh, you know, because you, you don't want to injure the chicken, but you would want it to, to train the chicken where you don't come onto the front porch. All right, guys, are you having as much fun? Are you having as much fun with these lessons as I am? I am really having a great time. And, and you guys, let me know who, who of you were able to really make this thing work and make it work you know, really, uh, really well, uh, like this where it doesn't crash. Let me know what luck you had in this. Okay, so we have done scanning, we have done searching, we have done tracking, we're doing it with dual cameras, we're operating at 21 frames per second, we have just virtually, uh, we have virtually no latency at all. I'm trying to get where you can see it in both cameras, okay? We have virtually no latency at all. And so I would say this is really good. I'm trying to think of what we should do next. Probably we ought to go ahead in and put the facial recognition software on here because that's a very useful thing for your, your various pro projects 
is to be able to recognize faces, identify the faces that you see, train it on faces, and then identify it. And then what you could imagine is you could be looking around with the, you could combine that then with this, and you could be looking around a room until you found the person that you were looking at. And then, you know, maybe you light them up with a little laser or something like that. And, you know, I mean, you, you, could do, uh, you could do different things once you found the person that you were interested in. But I think that would be a pretty neat next thing to do. And then after the face recognizer, I think we'll go into the NVIDIA utilities, the NVIDIA framework, and we will start seeing how to do uh, image recognition and then object detection. And then we'll look into how to train a deep neural network. Then after we do the, the deep neural network training using the, in, the NVIDIA utilities, I really think I just want to go in and teach you guys PyTorch because PyTorch is the software for Python that allows you to go out and build your own deep neural networks. And right now, a lot of the stuff we've been doing is running other people's libraries, but I can show you how from scratch to build your own deep neural network. And I think that is kind of fun. So that's a little bit about the direction that I am thinking about going. I hope you guys are enjoying these lessons. I really appreciate it. It's a big encouragement to me that people are actually out there taking these lessons and actually out there coding up this stuff. I think that's a really big, really big encouragement to me. So if you guys like the lesson, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. When you subscribe, make sure you ring that bell so you will get notifications when my new lessons come out. Again, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.